hello everybody, and uh, unfortunately, welcome to Let's Play Shadow the Hedgehog. I know it's been a long time coming, and uh, the lo Heroes was uh, quite a while ago at this point, not, probably not that long, but I feel like it's been a bit, uh, of, it's been a, it's been quite a while since Heroes ended, and thanks to a bunch of techno babble shenanigans. It took me longer to get to this game than I really anticipated. But now that that's all settled and over with, we're finally going through this game. And yeah, what a game it is. Let's just get this. <laughs> Let's just start this. Oh, God. It has been quite a few years since I played this game, so I'm kind of interested how this is going to go. Now that I think about it, the last time I played this game, I think was a Seas run, and that was like, well, t what, 2014 or something? So it's been a while. I don't, don't blame... <laughs> Don't think you can blame me for this, but this isn't really a game I tend to replay much, so... Yeah. Yeah, I just... Don't you hate that? Like, you're just... You're just kind of chilling in the woods or whatever, and then aliens just attack, like... Man. Low by. Just what was that all about? Who says you know the truth about who I am? And like it or not, I have to believe him. Yeah, trust a guy that's clearly evil. Good job. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. If there's one good thing I can say about the game, like right off the bat, the main theme like I am all of me and the opening are like the those are like so like the opening in the in the in this series in general like all the openings from I guess SA1 really like they've been consistent throughout the series um and I feel like heroes and especially this game are where they Actually, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, because SA1 was pretty high quality too, but I guess in terms of animation quality, then I would say that this is a pretty marginal step up. Like, it's pretty pretty big step up from um, SA1. Um, I suppose here is as well, because like, there's a lot more there's a lot more detail, and it d just very smooth and solid, and it just kind of gets better as the games go on, and um, I don't know what the studio is, but I do know that starting with like Unleashed, I believe, or like the Mario and Sonic Olympic games, I do believe that it's VE Studios that eventually formed into, uh, what is it, Mars or Animation Planet, and um, yeah, the the CG quality in these games is just great. It's great stuff. Anyways, though, so this is um, this is Shadow the Hedgehog. So there was a I I don't know specifics obviously because I wasn't around on the internet by the time this happened. But apparently there was a poll where people like Seg were asking which character they wanted. Uh, fans to get a game of, and Shadow ended up being the most popular, and this game came to be, I guess. I don't know if there's more to that story, I don't know if that's, like, even a real thing, but that's what I've heard, and... 
yeah, this game came, this game came to be, and um, I'll say this, I'll say this right now, I don't despise this game as much as I used to, and this game is running on the Heroes engine, and if you've watched that playthrough, you'll know, okay, I'm gonna actually turn the game down a bit, because <laughs> it's kind of hard to hear myself think with how loud this is. But yeah, it, this um, game runs in a Heroes engine, and if you've watched that playthrough, you know that I love that game, with some minor, well, some pretty big complaints that I have that most people do, like the whole repeating the same game four times and all that junk. So I do enjoy this game on a base level, like it's fun to play um, just by controlling S Shadow, Dis despite the like, the slipperiness, like, I do, I do think the, the slipperiness is slightly, is quite a bit worse in this game, compared to Heroes, like, it's very easy to lose your bearings. I will say that it is, it's easier for you to stop on a dime, though, so there's that, I suppose, but you really feel like you're skating all over the place, and, um, if you aren't careful, you can go just careening off places, so... Yeah, the controls aren't the greatest, but again, it's on the Heroes engine, and I enjoy how that game plays. So, you know, on a, on a base on a base level, I don't mind this game. And yeah, there's more there's more to that as we'll go through, but you know. Alright, new character. I love how the f I love how um, the chaos symbols are meant to be like hard to find and whatnot and like hidden away in a bunch of different places. Like they they go they I guess they just kind of go to different places whenever they're used. I I don't know, but regardless, um, I love how um, there's just two chaos symbols lying around in the city and three if you go to the hero path and it's just like. It, it goes from, wow, Tails, you got a Chaos Emerald, and then, <laughs> and then it just goes to this game where the most emeralds in the city here can be free. And it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> just casually pick up, like, a few emeralds in one place. Seems legit. Okay, so yeah, this has a morality system where you can choose between hero, dark, and neutral. Um, some stages, I believe, only have two routes, depending on like how many paths there are to take. Um, 
like sometimes there'll only be two ways to go so yeah that's to do with that um and the missions can change but think of think of like the chaotix missions in heroes where you had missions like kill three gold turtles blow out the torches which everyone loves um and just general stuff like that and again going back to heroes but if you recall from that from that lp I didn't mind, and I actually enjoyed nine about like ninety percent of the missions in that game, minus like Mystic Mansion and maybe a couple others I can't think of right now. Um, obviously, the bonus of the bonus missions kind of pull a rent, like kind of uh, pull a wrench in that. But in terms of just the main game, Team Cha Chaotix is actually one of my preferred ways to play heroes like after team sonic but in this game the main gate like the main method to play the game is through these missions and with the exception of the neutral missions which i don't think even every level has you're forced to do these random objectives like kill all the enemies activate these orb things in the ruins uh find all the bombs, other miscellaneous crap, and it's not always the worst thing in the world, like, there are some missions here and there that are actually pretty enjoyable, and I'll make sure to comment on those when I get to them, but a lot, a good chunk of them are just kind of tedious, like, it's, it was fine in Heroes for the most part, because with, like, Two exceptions, like the the uh, Han Castle and Mystic Mansion, the game gave you a bunch of leeway with the with your uh, objectives. Like you didn't need to kill, you didn't need to um, find every single key in in Final Fortress, and you didn't need to kill all the gold turtles in not Grand Metro, uh, Power Plant. And again, there are some exceptions to that rule, um, but the difference with that between that game and this game is that practically every mission I can think of requires you to get every single one of the your current objective, and it just gets to a point where you're kind of just you you kind of forced to just um, look around every nook and cranny just to make sure you don't miss a single enemy or a single whatever you need you're looking for and it just gets really tedious especially later on when the level <laughs> levels end up looking too much alike in terms of just general like locations and whatnot and you just kind of feel like you're running in circles and yeah there are specific levels that we'll get to later on that are like Easily the worst in that regard, but yeah, that will come to pass when when we get to it. But for now, I'm just going for the neutral path, so. I guess there's one thing to mention about the ranking system, uh, the, depending on what, I, I'll, ex I'll explain it after the card scene actually. Yeah, it looked completely different from SA2, it's like, alright. Or does he? I, I don't remember. I have to look back. Insert comment of how could he possibly have taken that uh, image between SA2 and this game. 
Like, you, I mean, you could have taken it after Heroes, but why, I, I don't know. Like, Shadow, I feel like, wouldn't want to be a part of that at that stage. Yeah, doesn't really matter. It's a minor, th minor thing, so whatever. But yeah, finally get to see Prison Island post-explosion. Yeah, so, um, as I was saying, um, the way the ranking system works in this game is, if you, say you go for the dark mission, um, any points that you get for, like, any points you get for the dark side will, will, um, end up adding up to your rank, and then all the hero points will, will end up minusing Okay, this is a bit weird to expect. Whoa! Oh, okay. Thanks, game. That was that was very cool. Um, but yeah, a what am I trying to say? Okay, so you get you're doing a dark mission, and the the dark points is gonna be like what you have, obviously, and the amount of hero points will mine your the amount of hero points will minus. Um, the, your points overall, so say you have 500, say you have 500 dark points and 200 hero points, you'll end up getting 300 points overall when you finish the mission. That's about as best I can say it. Um, so, depending on what type of mission you're doing, you want to prioritize one over the other. Um, you don't want to just ki end up killing everything like a madman if you care about your rank. Um, so keep that in mind. I, that's not something I knew, I knew about for the longest time, and it does it does make a huge difference. Um, that said, though, if you're doing a neutral mission, none of the dark or hero points actually matter. It only actually only actually um, counts general general like uh, bo uh, point bonuses like your time, your rings. And just stuff like that. So you don't really need to worry about killing enemies. With the exception of just getting Chaos Control to go through levels faster. But... Yeah, it's um, kind of interesting how they went about that. I do feel like they should have used that to determine if certain enemies... Good. <sighs> Good. That was just fail. Um, I do wish they used that system to make it so... If you had more dark points than hero points, then the aliens would leave you alone and the gun soldiers would be more um, aggressive towards you. And vice versa if you're good on the hero side. Um, because they don't care. Like, no matter how good you're doing on one side, every enemy will just come up to you and try, and to, and try to attack you. And if they had this ranking system in place already... I don't really see what was so hard about just making it so they uh, ignore you if the, if you're killing enemies for them and and vice versa. Like it's like I don't know, man. They had it was like so close to being right, and they just <laughs> mess up. They they just messed that up, and it's and um, if you just try to defend yourself, okay. Okay, let's not fall off her. Just trying to defend yourself, your teammate will just be like, why are you killing the good guys? Or like, why are you killing uh, your allies? And it's just like, dude, <laughs> like, t tell them to bugger off. And I like, actually focus on the enemies instead of me. But whatever. It's been complained about to death. It's not the it's not the worst thing in the world, but 
it's still kind of jarring. But yeah, speaking of Chaos Control, though, that's another thing um, that's actually pretty cool. Um, if you do enough evil things, I guess, or enough good things, your gauges for each would... Y your gauges for them will increase over time. And if you fill them up to full, you'll either get Chaos Blast or Chaos Control. Chaos Blast is... Well, they're both pretty self-explanatory. I've already done Chaos Control. It's just a massive speed boost, which is only really useful for get to the goal missions. Other than that, you're not really going to use it. Um, as with Chaos Blast, it's just pretty much as, as exactly how it sounds. Um, there are some secrets that can only be accessed by the, uh, the Chaos Blast explosion, though. But those are very rare. Um... And the f the secondary ability you get from the chaos abilities that's honestly more helpful is that you get infinite ammo while using those or having those like ava available to you, I guess. And that's like infinitely more useful than chaos blast or, con or control, to be quite honest. <laughs> Yep, Eggman Fleet is back. You do, unfortunately, you don't get an actual stage in the Egg Fleet, but they're just kind of in the background, I guess. And one of the missions in this up in this upcoming level has you shoot five of them down, I think. So, Oh, you mean just get to the goal again? I can do that. <laughs> so yeah, I... This, this stage is a little bit weird, because I always got the impression that Glyphic Canyon was basically just this stage. Um, like, just... Th this stage is Glyphic Canyon just actually activated and in the sky. And I always got the impression that this... This day, the Glyphic Canyon turns into Sky Truce because you activate the um, orb things. Because um, it's, it's like the same kind of architecture and the same kind of level level design. Um, so, it's kind of weird. Like, I feel like if that's true, obviously I could be wrong, but if that's true, I feel like they should have let, they should have moved the stage in a way that makes it makes it so you have to do the dark mission in Glyphic Canyon to get her. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, in my opinion. But, as you'll find out as we play through the game, this game doesn't really care about continuity. Like, the, like, the, uh, the story will just kind of move in a specific direction just because you went to a certain level and doesn't really care about... The consequences so you can have shadow just immediately take a u-turn from his original like goal and just have a completely different goal in mind than he had or just stuff will just not add up and it'll just be a complete mess like I can appreciate them for trying a morality system with all these different paths and whatnot but it just comes out as a complete mess. Like, the the story, depending on your your pathway, just is just a complete cluster. And it's just... <laughs> it's just a complete cluster fudge. And, um... Is... They really... I, I feel like what they should have done is made it so issue... It, it's just... Have it be one 
huge playthrough and have it so I guess the best way to describe the the best thing I can just uh, like compare this to would be like Spider-Man Web of Shadows where you just do one single playthrough and you have a bunch of choices between like the good side and the dark side and uh, depending on how many good things or bad things you do will determine what ending, final boss and stuff you- and whatnot you get. And I feel like they should have done something similar with this game, where, again, it's just one big playthrough, you do- you decide which path- what- which, uh, missions to do, and depending on how many- how many dark and hero missions you can play, by the end of the game, you either do- you, you either have, like, a fight with Black Doom or a fight with, like, I don't know, Sonic and the Command or whatever. Whatever happens, I guess. Um, and... Oh, God. <laughs> Let's not die, please. Uh, okay. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that would be a much less messy method of, of doing the whole morality system because there are way too many pathways. There's, like, ten different endings. And the kicker of that is that it doesn't even matter what paths you go through. All that matters is that you get all ten endings to get to the final story, which is like the canon ending to the game, which completely spits in the face of a morality system in the first place. It's like, why bother giving us the option to choose if you're just going to decide, if, if you're just going to decide for us at the last minute? And, again, if that's the case, just give us one single playthrough with two definitive endings. Like, maybe you could find a way to include a neutral ending, but I don't know how that would work with how my idea goes about it. But, regardless, if they just had, like, two distinct ending endings like that, and made it so... Uh, obviously, obviously, that's not going to fix the whole game. Obviously... The missions would have to be um, fixed because you know the story is as as mess as uh, messy as it is. The story is not this game's worst problem, but I feel like if they did, I if if they did make it less messy and more straightforward, I feel like it will. I feel like it will be be a lot more enjoyable and easy to follow. And just not so much of a... I don't even know. It, it's just... It, it feels really unfocused, really um, all over the place, really just messed up, really, I guess. I don't know. And... Again, it could have been done... It could have been, could have been handled way better. Web of Shadows is... I have my own issues with that game, but... For what it's worth, I feel like that idea's way of doing the morality system was pretty much how I feel like this game should have handled it. Um, and... I don't know, man. I, this could have been done a lot better. I like the idea of a morality system for Shadow, because for the type of game this is, like getting your memories back and whatnot, it makes sense, and, you know... I feel like, I feel like this, the idea of this game has a lot of potential, and given better develop, like, better design ideas, and a more, f a more focused story, I feel like this would be a much better game. But, you know, we're just at the start of this, so I don't want, I don't want to blow my entire load. No, jokes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to give, say everything like now, but, yeah. I, I just want to say right now that I don't think, I don't think this game is beyond repair. Like, I feel like the idea of this game is solid on paper, and that given the right design ideas, and the right, and just rethinking 
how this game works, I feel like this could have been really great. And, you know, I would honestly be... I, I know, like, what Clement mentioned this in Sonic Forces, I believe, but... Um, I'd be honestly down with a Shadow the Hedgehog 2. Not necessarily in this style, but if it was, like, Team Dark just doing missions for Gun or something on those lines, um, and it's, like, a spiritual successor to this game with an actual, like, cons like... If it's, like... A like a Shadow Two that's like a spiritual successor to this game, where you just do a bunch of missions from Gun and you have Rouge and Omega, and it's basically a mix of this game and Heroes and how it plays. And I feel like si since Shadow po like post this game is a uh, pretty much it's pretty much just. Oh god, nice. Uh, pretty much just working for Gun at this point and doesn't have the whole amnesia thing going on anymore. I feel like a morality system is completely unnecessary at that point, so I I don't know if you'd have like different missions for like a bunch of missions for each stage and depending on which one you do you go to a different level like this game. I don't know how that would work because Again, a morality system wouldn't make sense, but regardless of such, I would love to see. A, I would love to see them take a new crack at a game like this, where they ha you have different, you have a bunch of different objectives you can do, and um, since this, oh crap! Okay, okay, I have to kill this guy, um, and since again. It would presumably be one story. It wouldn't have the issue of this game where <laughs> the plot will just kind of abruptly change depending on what route you take. Um, and and just another thing is that they really need they really need to use these other characters more because like. I think since, since, like, what, Secret Rings, they primarily just been using Sonic alone. And... Forces gave me, like, a small glimmer of hope where... You have the OC, which is st still technically modern Sonic with, like, a, with, like, a weapon. Um, and without a boost. But... You know, at least that's a start of a different playing as a different character, and even though Shadow is literally just a Sonic clone in Forces, it does give me hope for the future that maybe they'll, maybe they'll end up giving other characters another go again, and the banter between Team Dark and Sha in uh, Shadow's campaign just kind of makes me wish that we get a a spin-off concerning those three, like just. I just want to play as Team Dark, going around the world, doing missions for Gun, and whatever. Like, you don't even have to c have it make, like, matter to the main series. Like, just make it a full-on spin-off. You don't even need to include the other members of the cast um, outside of, like, cameos or whatever. Just have it be a story of Team Dark doing missions, and... I, I don't know what your end goal would be, but... Just go wild. Like, I feel like that could be a really fun game. If... Pro provided the missions don't suck. <laughs> because, again, as you'll find out as we go through, 80% of the missions are terrible in this game. Like, if they had missions more on the line of, cha of um, Chaotix in Heroes, I feel like that would be much better, per personally. Yeah.
Okay, so, um, this boss is a complete joke. So you just get into the turret, and you just shoot like a madman. He gets mad. And you just shoot him again. And he's done. A <laughs> good boss! Yeah. Once you're given firearms, the bosses are just a complete joke in this game. I know some of them take a while to spawn, like, guns and stuff. So, some take longer than others just because of that, but still. Well, not necessarily spawn, like, there's usually boxes around, but uh, I know, like, the gun bosses in particular um, usually have you break off their missile tanks, regardless. Weird techno music. <laughs> okay, so this is an example of the story doesn't know what the hell it's doing. <laughs> Where if you, I don't know, like if you are in the arc or whatever other level, um, and you went to the pathway that leads to lava shelter, Shadow will just suddenly go, "Oh, I must be the android Doctor Eggman created," and it's just like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? Like, there was no build up to this in your pathway, and then you're suddenly just like, oh, I must be an android. Like, that's my example, like, that's a big example of why this morality system just doesn't work in this case, because the story doesn't care. It just. <laughs> the story will change depending on what level you're going to, and in the case of Lava Shelter, it's just. Completely stupid. <laughs> like, I, like, they really should have planned that out way better than they did. But whatever. But yeah, for what it's worth, I don't think all the levels in this game are complete hot trash. Um, and no, I wasn't trying to make a pun there. Um, I do f Lava Shelter, for instance, I think is a great level. Like, the music's great, both pathways are really fun, and both are... Both end up requiring you to take completely different pathways, which makes the second playthrough of this of this stage um, actually really enjoyable compared to most stages, where it's just pretty much the same crap again. Whereas this stage, again, you go to completely different pathways, depending on the mission you're doing, and the level design is also just really fun and exhilarating. Like, you go a bunch of, like, triangle jumps, you go a bunch of, like, fun grind rails that you can build up tons of speed on, and a lot of... some tricky platforming on, on the, uh, dark version of the stage, and... I feel like this is a pretty good st pretty good stage to end the neutral pathway on, uh, I will say. Like, this is one of those stages that I feel, I feel like if, if they brought this back in, like, a, like, generations or something, um, or like, if they had to bring a stage from this game into generations, this probably would be one of my picks. Like, this or, um, one of the, I didn't want to do that, uh, or, like, one of the outdoor arc levels, not the indoor ones. The outdoor ones, like, because the outdoor ones are actually decent. Um, it's the indoor ones that I have an issue with, but more on that later. But yeah, the, this stage is pretty fun, gotta say. And I love how there's, like, no um, 
cap to the the rail grinding. You can literally just build up speed on rails pretty much infinitely, and you'll just get faster and faster. It's, it's pretty good. And. Now for the uh, bus. Now for the bus. Oh my god. Meme line. I love this goofy machine, it's so stupid looking. <laughs> Okay, so fun fact, <laughs> if you're on zero lives, he'll he'll just activate the missiles or like whatever he decides to do first and just <laughs> and he'll just kind of hit himself. It's amazing. Uh but yeah, this is a slot machine boss and is it the I think it's the only time in a game where there's a casino like a casino slot machine kind of this thing going on. Um, interesting idea for a boss, I guess, but it's, um, okay, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you just hit the free slots. Don't, don't mash the attack button because you need, to, you need to have Shadow re reorientate himself, and um, you know, screw those rings, I don't need them. Um, you need to have him reorientate himself and like face the machine, basically. I don't know how to explain it, but basically just don't mash the home- just don't mash the attack button because most of the time you'll end up just doing a jump dash like that. Sometimes this- sometimes you can't avoid it, but you wanna- you wanna wait like- like what, half a second or something before aiming again- before like pressing A again. Or X if you're playing this on PS2 I guess. Yeah! Okay. Oh, come on. But yeah, this is a pretty easy boss. You just gotta make sure he doesn't do any attacks. Um, it's kind of just a war of attrition. Just gonna wait until he kills himself. Yeah, it's a great idea for a robot, dude. It's like... It's like, you, you, you should just hijack the thing, so... No matter what, it always... Um, ends up... Attacking for you, not against you. But... This is Eggman we're talking about, so... Yeah. I guess... I don't know, well, I guess we are forcing it to do things. And I, I like, I like the... I like the idea that... <laughs> the, um, Shadow Fever is a thing because it's like, oh, it's to power up his androids. Which, you know, I feel like that does make sense. But it's just funny to think that he just <laughs> has this random ability to make Shadow stronger. 
Um, just, like, oh man. And anticlimactic Wingo. But yeah, out of the three major, bo like, ending bosses, this is by far the easiest one. Again, just make sure he doesn't ever do an attack. If he does, they're not that hard to avoid, really. Um, again, it just, it's just kind of a war of attrition. It's not the worst boss in the world, and there's at least more thought to it than the, the egg breaker. But still, not, not, not exactly the greatest. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eggman dies in like what like three or four different endings. It's um a bit messed up. Vacuum gun. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I wasn't. I didn't show the ending because we still got one more pathway to go with uh, neutral. Um, so let's just do it again.